attempts the Seattle Surge. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Call of Duty League. Don't worry, we bring nothing but good tidings as not only do we return, but so will the game. It is time. Optic Texas versus Boston Breach. I know you've been patient. I know you have been waiting. And not least for Chris Tan. Tan, welcome back. Oh, yeah, that's a price. It's nice to be back. I, I'm actually wondering if I'm going to remember how to do this, whether or not I could do it in the first place is a point up for discussion. But nonetheless, I'm very excited to get in what should be a very good game with Boston taken on Optic, the new look Boston. Uh, the same look, but new look, but all look Optic. Who knows which way this roster is going to go by the end of the season with how things have been going. But a tough game for them to kick off yet yeah, in stage four. It certainly was. Obviously, Optic rebuild, redemption, overcoming those obstacles. Boston Breach looking to stop the backslide that they have had so far. But is this a step too far as well? At the moment, you can see it's all Optic in P1. Good initial start from the Optic boys. And yeah, I, I'm really interested to see how this is going to go because we're questioning what kind of practice did they get? Was Illy in there? Well, how much were they going on with Pro Loot? Are they going to be able to step back into it? A lot of the conversation is Boston will get some control has been on optics failing so much but realistically they're still being pretty consistent it's just when it's come around to those majors they aren't able to get the results that they maybe feel they deserve so let's see how they do online once more and see if they can bring it to the major this time around rotation over towards p2 scump is going to be there though trying to lock this one down his teammates are on their way all about top boat control and you can see scum just roaming just trying to play his life the rest of his teammates flood into this one as well but boston bridge also here in numbers and now the fight goes down, probably in a great angle. They're trying to cut this one down at the same time. Optic will have the bodies to get this first little bit of control coming through, but it's very much a slugfest as both teams are throwing down now. New boy on Boston, Breach and Vivid. Well, eventually get taken down by Shotzi, as will TJ. It's only Dashi that can fell Shotzi in the end. But I'm really curious how Vivid's going to do on this roster. We will talk about it a little bit more. Search and Destroy is maybe a contentious one as well, but... We'll maybe talk about it when we get there, but what a way to kick things off on Gav. I think uh, me, you, and anybody else who plays rank knows and being an SMG player on this map is not necessarily the most of fun, but five and four from him to kick things off, but that's kill feed. That looks very Optic Texas-like. Lockdown P1 control here from Shotzi. Five in a row from him. Is he going to make it six here? And a TJ, of course, he is. It's going to be a P3 rotation locked in by Optic Texas with about a 20-point lead. It's a good start to give it to. It certainly is an interesting history actually between these two teams. Now, they've only actually played one time in the entire CDL this year. And last time around, Gavu actually went to Boston Breach. Problem was, all the way back in stage one, different rosters, different story all the way through. And Boston, with the hardest schedule at the moment in this stage, could desperately do with this win. It's a terribly hard schedule, it has to be said. And, you know, we talked about it. Well, we heard the guys on the desk talking about it a little bit more when it comes down to Gav. They've, they've struggled after some initial success, but they've actually won it the last three times they've played it. So let's see how they go. I don't think it's a terrible pick for them, but it's still going to be a struggle to beat this Optic team across the whole series. Let's see if they can keep up, pick up some points here over towards P3, though. Eventually, it is going to be Optic who find their way out. But Boston did a good job of breaking on through, flipping those spawns around so they have the rotation over towards P4. We can see they're already set up. Vivid will be the first one to encounter somebody. Five spree for the new gun on Boston Breach. Well, Boston in a very good position here to bring this back. Probably looking for that first kill, but Nero's all the way pushed out by both. Vivid is going to be here as well. Scum's going to eventually win that gunfight, but the only player who will do... And now the hard push through P1. Right now, Boston Breach have this in full control. Lovely setup so far. They've slowed Optic right down, haven't they? Setting themselves up on board, just making themselves awkward. Wait a minute, there's one man. I mean, it's literally only methods here, but somebody's actually slipped on through. Shotzi finds a way in, Bryce. That's the one man. That's always the one man for Optic. Finds it, makes the play, and Optic have managed to bring this back to chaos, but Vivid Ooh. gets three! He locks it down! Optic, they broke it, and Vivid takes those points back. Eventually, Shotty gets two more as well to get this into it, and TJ will get the scrap points going into this one. Boston Breach with a really good hold. Almost a little bit of Optic magic coming through. But now, the rotation coming through again. Boston Breach looking really oh good my now. God. It's a perfect rotation coming in from Boston here as well. There's one second left to go. Look where Optic are spawning in Boston on the rotation. It's only Scumpier can slowly slow it down before he is taking down. 15 and 7 out of Vivid. It's a perfect rotation as mentioned from Boston. After a relatively good hold at P4. I mean, this is some good time for Boston. And they can continue to do so. But these kills towards green are going to be so crucial. But Vivid is there again. Spawns in for Optic towards the back though. 
Uh, this made this team change and people weren't certain if it was going to be the right one. Huge fans of Caps at the moment. Vivid proving his worth. Left, right and centre. Eventually up to going to get the kills on the break coming through. To bring this back to a tight hill if they can hold it down. There'll be a lot of points left remaining. And of course that P1 rotation also coming in. Dashi already setting up for it. Boston have eyes on though and they are putting numbers towards it. Give it up after what will maybe be a bit of an unfortunate spawn. You can kind of see why it happened. The green push comes through. Nobody from Boston over towards the back. It can sometimes just be that way. This rotation over towards P1, though, has been fruitful so far for the side of Boston Breach. Now we're going to start getting some points on the board. Can Optic find a way through? P5 is usually a good one for Optic. Not really getting much of it. Find themselves behind into this second rotation of hills. But can they start doing a little bit more? I'm not too sure if Nero's going to be putting shots in like that. Well, Prolook was not having a good time there at the moment and eventually he's going to go down, but Scum breaks himself through. Vivid is going to be here as well, looking for him. Just guns down. Dashley looks for Scump as well. It's all Vivid on this map, 20 and 12, and he is causing issues for Optic Texas turn. And the conversation that was had about Vivid is that he is that player who will find those few more engagements than Capsidal will. And my goodness me, are we seeing a perfect example of that so far? 20 and 12, not necessarily using that MP4 that I thought he may well have been of have, have doing, but the auto in his hand, still very, very dangerous, this man. 20 and 12, about to make it 21 with Dashi. A sitting duck to Vivid, who just continues to dominate. That kill comes on through, and that lead for Boston Breach just continues to grow. Well, Boston Breach in the lead. Let's find out how they are feeling in the comms with a listen in. I didn't know, they didn't know. They still tap out. Thomas got tap out together. I don't see him tap out. Left him. Got 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 Set us on top. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Alright, one on streak, one on streak there. Get him, watch out up here. Thank you. You're alone, you're alone. I'm pushing up right here. Me and Rick, I'm gonna shoot this. I'm gonna shoot this. Brandon was ring, Brandon was ring. Okay. I'm gonna try and get. I'm watching you back. I stun first. You're gonna go around probably. I stun him first, cut. I'll take his shot. I'm watching deep. I'm watching deep. Brandon was ring, I don't know where he is. I'm watching deep, I'm watching deep. Then go your first cut. Yeah, it could be deep on me. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. You have to die, Zen. Just don't play time on guys. Yo, He's okay. ring 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 I have all mid, hold right. Alright, I'm going for him. Push. Uh, I'm going for him. Push. 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 I'm going for well, we've been listening to Boston Breach, but we've been watching Optic Texas bring this game all the way back. But same old story, Tun. Boston Breach have locked in this rotation. Can Optic do a better job of it this time? I mean, if they can do as good of a job as they did to rotate and break over towards P3, then Optic should have no problem breaking this. Of course, they have the glide bomb, courtesy of Scump. 25 and 12 out of him. He's really started to step it up in the second half of this hard point. It's a push on through now. A little bit dangerous here for the side of Boston Breach. Vivid will win one. TJ winning the second, but Shotzi once again finds a way behind Nero. Important gunfight to win. Optic not quite able to break through there, but I just want to touch on something as they regroup there with the fact that Scum found that glide bomb and called it in immediately. Boston were not ready for that. Perfect break for Optic. They find the lead momentarily. Boston back into it now, though, with 30 seconds remaining here on P4. The big hole from Boston. Pressure coming in. You can see Optic trying to squeeze this one down as much as possible. But well, that is a full wipe, and now Optic will have to throw up the iron cannon and try to lock this down. You can see... At the moment, oh Nero is just gunning already, going to go into green. Boston smell a little bit of blood in the water here. Scum's going to lock down green as well. Dashy here at the same time. They are desperately trying to hold off Boston. And at the moment, doing a just about good enough job for it. And we're going over towards P5, which is Optic's best hill. 
over towards P5. They have not been broken where they found the first setup here as we move over towards the fifth hill on Kavutu. They need to lock down every single point. They're only around 15 or so away, but they can put themselves in touching distance of the win. They haven't been broken yet, but they may well be here, but the team nade comes through. Optic still holding on. This is a real dig. The old fingernails in time for both teams. You can see Dashi just trying to get as many kills as he can. Still pressure coming through, though. Dashi eventually finds it. Nero will get gunned down towards us. Those change of spawns could oh prove God. influential, but Dashi on five, Dashi on six. Oh. Looking for the glide now. His teammates are going to try and bait him out, but already we're off to the races. P1 is coming up here as Optic have taken the lead again, and Shotzi is on the hunt. He is ready on the flank, and Method is about to catch an MP40 to the skull. But is it going to be enough? Boston find their way over towards P1. Optic Texas only 15 or so away. Boston need a good hold here. That grenade from Prolu might open things up here, Bryce. Scump's in. Scump has managed to find himself in the cupboard. And somehow Optic have got straight through here and it's all kills for Optic. There's over a glide. And over again. Optic have brought this back from it. Dashi brings in the glide bomb. It could be the final dagger in the coffin. And it is. Optic Texas, not the best of starts, but the very best of finishes as they hold against Boston Breach. And we can only see Pro Loot, but he looks happy. Big Dashi with the eight spree towards the end gets the job done. I talked about that P5 hold over and over again this year. They are yet to be broken when they win that rotation. And the perfect example of that. They lock it down thanks to Dashi going on six in a row on the hill and he finishes it off with three. Over towards P1, Pro Loot with the initial kill. Dashi with another guy bombs in, it's game over. A valiant effort from the side of Boston Breach, but opt to get the job done when it was necessary there. Found themselves around, what, 20 or 30 behind, heading in over towards P5, but then were pretty much perfect there. Rotate round, find the kills, it's job done. It is. I, I, I gotta say, you gotta say, you know, Scump obviously finding that glad bomb earlier. Dashi with the last final hold. And then, here's, here's the thing. Boston was set up in a P1, and there was a, a large part of me going, this is gonna be a difficult break for Optic. It's going to be very hard fought. Prolu with that first nade, and then Boston looked like they kind of backed off a little bit, like they were a little bit unsure of exactly where Optic was supposed to hit them from. And then obviously, as you saw, kill feed, all Optic, all of the time. Big plays out of the, the Texas roster, and Boston Breach, they were close considering the slaying yeah. in some aspects of that team was not there. It really wasn't. Some of the ARs we fully expect to do the business. I think it was a 1125 game out on Methods. He currently, or well did, uh, have a 1.26 KD on Kavu2 hard point. But I, I mean, I'd imagine that's going to have trickled down after that one. But to be fair to them, they really did hang with Optic all the way through when it does come down to points. I think the big difference maker for me is the two streaks that Optic went on. Scum gets a hold of the Glide Bomb, finds that perfect break over towards P3 from that. The Glide Bomb comes in towards the end from Dashi. Well, it may well have already been done by that stage, but it obviously helps you secure those final couple of points. So Optic just streaking when they needed to and finding those points when they need to. 250 to 220. Not necessarily comfortable, but a fair representation of how the map went. A solid win for Optic to kick things off. And I think probably looking at these maps and the layout of the series, that would have been the scary one for them, to be honest with you. I think I look at the rest of it and I, I actually don't mind it for Optic whatsoever. So now that Gav is out of the way, yes, okay, it is their best hard point map, but it was also Boston. So that's something you've got to worry about a little bit. Three in a row from Boston, that is going to end right there. Optic will take the win of map number one. And I don't know how I feel about the rest of the maps for, for Boston, to be honest, Pricey. But something I did just want to kind of touch on here is something that we need to watch from and the search and destroy from Vivid. When it comes to those first bloods, I'll maybe touch on it a little bit more, though, because we do have something else to quickly look at. We'll talk about it in a second, but there is a discrepancy when it comes to the first bloods compared to who he has replaced in Capsule. It is. Well, speaking of the SD, let's take a look at our top performers then and who we expect to see really do the damage in this one. Of course, Methods versus Shotzi. Methods with a little bit of a poor start there in the hard point on Gavudu will be looking to redeem himself in this one. Currently running at 1.04 KD, going up against a lot of people's MVPs so far this year. This man is everywhere and he is magic. It's Shotzi, the 1.15. How do you feel about it, Tan? Because obviously, you know, first blood win percentage, 48.3% versus 47.8% itself. And obviously, I know you have other stats to back this up, talking about first bloods. 
yeah having a look at it when it does come down to possession destroy overall capital was taking the most of the first blood engagements that boston would undertake in search and destroy 32 percent mind you it was just a minor advantage over one of these teammates i believe one of them was at 30 percent but capital 32 percent of boston's first blood engagements came from him winning 54 percent of them looking at vivid and obviously this is from his time in florida only a first blood win percentage of 35% with a 0.78 KD in search and destroy. Capsules 1.14. So Capsules was that guy who was finding those aggressive moments, finding those first bloods to help this team on their way. Vivid was definitely not that guy for Florida. Is he going to be that guy for Boston? That's going to have to be where the jury is out. But honestly, I, I didn't mind how he played in that first map. Really was there and, and hanging with the rest of Optic. He was the guy who was getting the job done for Boston, but... I mean, you don't want to, you know, put it on anybody in particular <laughs> on that one, but it has to be said there was quite a discrepancy between his KD and uh, methods and TJs. I, I think it's really interesting how we talk about, uh, you know, players when they come into rosters uh, in, the, in the CDL, because the pressure is always massively on them. Because you've got to remember the expectations for any player coming through is, oh, this team wasn't good enough. We need somebody else who's better. So if you come in your first match and you don't do well, everyone goes, oh, that change was terrible. We want our favorite player back that we've seen for months on end. So the, the pressure is always unbelievably high on any player making a start on any roster in this as well. And it probably goes even more for Boston, right? Because bearing in mind, we've been talking about how Boston have slowly been sliding down those standings over and over again, and they need to hold it. And they need to halt it in one of the most difficult schedules that we have seen for any team in any split and it looks a little bit horrible for them time because we've been over this a couple of times but we'll keep hammering this one home optic is their first here nobody really expects that win thieves have looked better recently our major three champions are their third game la gorillas new rosters new opportunity they're the major two champions that's probably one of the ones that boston may be able to grab some points through we'll see how that gets to when we get to it and of course toronto ultra who at major three had a resurgence and finally looking like they know how to play all three game modes tough yes absolutely toronto very much with one of the biggest resurgences we've seen this year so far but when it does come down to boston i think if they were looking at this schedule a two and three from that i think they'd snap your hand off for it to be honest with you i i, I think that is so so tough especially in the position that they they are have been in but it has to be said, and I don't want to take anything away from them. You have to only just beat everybody who's in front of you. But they have had a couple of brackets and a couple of these major tournaments that have been, I, I want to say, handy for them. I, I, again, you've just got to beat who's in front of you, so it's not their fault. But they've had a couple of nice brackets that's got them some decent points at majors. And it's a good job that that is the case because, as you mentioned, they really have been in, in free fall uh, for, for quite some time now. So yeah we need to see something happen for them that's why the change for vivid has come in I, I would say i would agree with nameless in in a certain aspect that this feels touch panicky i would say so you know these boys don't want to get caught slipping so vivid has come in a good performance of map number one has to be said going up against optic though on that map always going to be difficult it's the search and destroy where i'm going to possibly be critical of him but let's see if he can prove me wrong on this one. It just when you look at the stats, they don't add up for search. Let's see if he can prove me wrong and everybody who's looking at the stats wrong. <laughs> Speaking of stats wrong, I want to talk a little bit about Optic. Uh, obviously, for Optic, the points aren't as crucial. Obviously, seeding does matter going forward. They have their own one to, to kind of get through. And the thing about this is, the way I'm viewing it is, it's more of a sort out and overcome adversity thing. I don't want to... I'm not a doctor, right? So I don't really want to talk about what's happening with Illy too much because I don't know. The only person who really does is Illy. I wish him all the best. I hope he gets well. He is a superlative player and I want to see him play again. But Optic are now staring down the barrel of having to say who is going forward in our roster and what can we do? Because time is ticking. Champs is around the corner. Major 4 is around the corner. So if anything, now they need to just lock in and try to figure this one out. A good mix of teams as well for them moving forward into this one. One, Rocker Legion, Subliners, and Ultra are the next four games. And I know a lot of people at home would love to see them go for the old 5-0 here, regain that confidence, go into Major 4, do the business, and get themselves ready for champs. So there's an awful lot to break down with this roster. Obviously, they've clinched it, regardless of what I might have tweeted out earlier in the day. They've locked it in. Uh, nobody can really overtake Optic Texas, or at least to knock them out of the top eight ton. But they've also... One of the things you've got to talk about here is the fact that every other team is probably going to be super hungry right that bubble is a knife fight in a cupboard and everybody is feeding the pressure in the next three weeks of qualifiers 
yeah, well, I, I don't think for a second that Optic will take their, their foot off the pedal in terms of their games. I think it's a really good opportunities to try and dial things in as best as they possibly can with Pro Loot. But for me, one of the questions that, that, that I'm asking specifically of Optic here is at what stage do you say, right, do we just stick with Pro Loot throughout the rest of it? Or as soon as Illy's ready, do you bring her back in? Is that a week before champs? I, I mean... At what point do you sort of stick or twist? That okay. that would be my question when it comes down to this optic roster. While we're waiting for this lovely to get record, I'm going off on a tangent because I I, I, I I don't we know if I, well. I wanted to talk about this, but I feel like I have to. I don't want I don't know if I want to talk about Illy versus Prolu and when's Illy coming back anymore because the main thing I care about is that Illy gets well and doesn't come back before making it any worse. Right? I don't know anything 100%. about his injury. One thing I do know is I care very much about player wellness, and I hope every player takes this as a, a great opportunity to really look into what makes sure they don't get any injuries or anything wrong for the next season or any next split going forward. So for me, I I don't really want to talk about the argument about when is Illy coming back. Illy will come back when he is ready, and I'm happy for him. I just want to talk about Texas Optic and what they can potentially do with this current roster and how their prospects are moving forward in the major foreign champs. I think that this roster has the opportunity to do very, very well. We have seen it in the qualifiers over and over again. We just haven't seen it on LAN yet. This is going to be the opportunity for them to fix those mistakes, fix any perceived weakness that may be meaning they aren't performing to their very top specifications when they go into those major events right pro Luke is a good player we know he's a good player he has a few shaky maps the team is not always firing on every cylinder they need to i fully believe like three or four months ago i was feeling in my gut this looked like an optic texas potential year for a ring right i still have that feeling this team just needs to tighten those thumb screws just the tiniest amount the talent is there I am fully convinced the talent in this roster is there to make a significant run for the champs. And that's what the next few weeks for me are about. It's not about yeah, this I, hypothetical. I, it's not about all everything else. I want to know what this roster can do, and I want them to prove it. Yeah, quite literally, yeah, tighten those thumb screws, right? I, I mean, hopefully, of course, Elite does get better. But the player on there, Prolute, he's one of these guys who came from the challenger's side of things. He steps up to an optic roster. He's a very solid player. But as mentioned, from the challenger side, let's have a look. Can you boys get the job done in the challenger side of things? July 8th to the 10th, of course, in Boston at the Helix Esports Arena. Get your tickets now for that event. Very excited to see how things go down there. We Obviously, we were jumping in and out of the challenger side of things uh, ourselves in that previous season. It's been crazy all the way through. And we've seen more guys than ever make it to the CDL throughout the whole of the season from that challenger side of things. So it is not any better yet to get your name up in those lights. Fantastic stuff to see from the challenger side of things but of course playoffs and champs sign up for the pre-sale now live at the Collins center in la i'm excited bryce i get to see you sweat more in a really hot place look i need to be at champs all right i have been to the majority of the champs for the last decade i have missed out on the last two i am going to be there in the garden center i am going back to la it is always the pinnacle of every single body's year in call of duty esports there is magic around champs it is different it has always felt different and it's where legends are made nobody forgets but speaking of forgetting, we haven't forgotten about the game. The cards to certain destroy is ready. I know, I know. Cast to start the game. Trust me, I want to see gameplay just as much as the rest of you. And it's here, finally. Austin Breach versus Optic Texas. And I tell a little bit of a lie. <laughs> uh, you broke it again. I, I was excited and it, and it didn't work. It didn't you work. I did break you know it. Why? It would have been fine if you didn't say that we were going into <laughs> uh, Let's talk about the Bacar Search and Destroy for a little bit, though. Optic have had their struggles on offensive setups. If they do try to tend and like take their time a little bit, we'll go with the neutral, try find those picks. That's not something that works for them. But then when it comes down to Boston, 2 and 14 on their A hits on Bacar. That's yeah. not great. That, 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 <laughs> it's, that's it's, that, it's... that that's your main attacking source when it does come down to to because show two and 14 on the last 16 attempts is something they will look to rectify but again that kind of goes back to this vivid pick what what do you do with that do you turn him into that first blood monster that he was not on florida that capsule in a certain sense was does he maybe play his own game we know vivid on because when it comes down to it he's a good player he is his playground so to speak but you're going up against somebody called Shotzi who is very, very well versed on this map as well. So it should be an interesting one. I, I think Optic will still be looking at this as a potential uh, banana skin, I would say. But 
hopefully we'll be jumping in soon and find out exactly how it is going to go down but yeah i, I mean how long are we, can we have this conversation about optic and, and how they <laughs> how they're going to go on based on servers probably on the 20 minutes uh, uh, yeah, yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe we've got plenty of time right. uh, but there's so many things to discuss though right so, i mean there's so many different storylines that we're delving into here in stage four it set it up to be so so exciting as we close out the year. I, I'm just su super stoked. I'm just happy to be back. To be frank, it was <laughs> I very back, depressing. I'm, it I'm very I'm very happy that you're going to be a major four. But speaking of which, uh, here is a special mention from Crimzix about everything major four you need to know. Hey, we interrupt this programming to bring you a very important message. Did you guys buy your tickets for Major 4 yet? Buy your tickets at nyxl.com slash major, and you can come see me July 14th through 17th at the King's Theater. I swear to God, you better do that. You better do it. You better buy your tickets, all right? You ain't getting in if you don't have tickets, so what are you doing? Don't make me mad. Don't do that. Don't make me mad. All right, thank you very much, Krim. Yes, special mention about tickets. Uh, in the interest of, of just being open with everybody, obviously, a few lobby issues today. Don't worry, we are trying to get the game ready. It's not us stalling. I know Tun hasn't cast in a little while. That is not the reason we are hanging this one out. We are just trying to make sure that when the lobby goes up, it stays up and everything is good so we can get some Call of Duty on the screen. It does mean, unfortunately, you have to suffer with me and Tun talking about whatever we feel like talking about for the next few minutes. And I promise you, I promise you one thing. As soon as the game is ready to go, we will go to it. Trust me, nothing I want to do more than talk about Call of Duty over some wonderful gameplay between these two squads. But Tun, I cut you off. You want to talk about Bacaj S&D, and I want your actual feelings about how you think it's going to go and who wins. I, I'm kind of feeling optic after that first one. I think about if I was Boston heading into map number one, yes, okay, as mentioned, it is one of optic's best, but it's also one of Boston's. You would have looked at it and said, right, let's give it a good go here, see how we can go. But I think it's it's the, the manner of the defeat as well may well have just caused a couple of issues there. I, I think they will be disappointed in how it went down. But Search and Destroy is a completely different game mode. We're on a completely different map. It's a different part of the series. You just have to wipe that clear, uh, slate clean. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure what I was going to say. You have to wipe it clean completely and just go into the second map and see how you can do. At the end of the day, the team change has come in. I, I, I don't want to say this is a free shot because, you know, look, realistically, they're not in a great spot when it does come down to the standings. They're not in a terrible spot either. But their schedule is so, so difficult that... Would you rather have the harder games now when Vivid is just coming to the team? That's that's kind of what I'm weighing up. Would you rather get the Aye. baptism of fire over and done with to then go into the games which are a little bit more winnable, well practiced? That's kind of my theory around it. <laughs> look, look, so I have to disagree with what you said there a little bit. Of you said Optic are you said Boston aren't in a bad place. I, I I think they are. I think you're wrong there. I think this is I said that bubble is, is, I said it's two games. Place. It's like twenty points. It's like twenty points. It's super close. It's a horrible time. You've got to remember, right? That when we go to the major, there's a very real possibility nobody gets any points. Very real possibility. Four teams not getting any points. And it goes up very, very slowly towards the top here. If you don't have a good qualifiers, you are in serious, serious trouble. We could already have Boston overtaken by the end of this week, right? And they could be right on the danger zone. That's how bad this is. This is how dangerous it could be for these teams going forward. Anybody in that bubble is an absolute danger zone. They have to knuckle in. They cannot afford any mistakes. They need to squeeze every last point out of it. And I am squeezing this fill section of everything it's got work. But, but, I believe the game is ready. It is time. Boston Breach versus Optic Texas. It's Picard's search and destroy. And we're on board with Dashy. But they could be in a worse spot, right? <laughs> yeah, of course they could. <laughs> they could be Paris. Anyway, here we are. Heading into the car search and destroy and for the side of Texas, this neutral setup that we are seeing is something that hasn't necessarily been in their favor. And there you go. Example in point. Nero will find that first blood, helping his teammates out here. And now Texas have a 3v4. Looking like a B stack coming in, but can they find a pick to help them? Well, this is the trouble now for Texas. Where? Where can they find a little bit of control? Boston ain't moving. At the moment, they're looking for River, so this may come down to methods. Oh, Scump. Sneaky beaver. Sneaky. Snaky. Wiggly. Looking. 
for just a hint here, and he's going to get onto it. And he doesn't have the bomb. If he did, he could probably plant it and play around it. But he has made the first steps forward. <laughs> and time is running out. Time is running out. Hey, would it be perfect to be at the bomb, wouldn't it? Little stone check goes out. Grenade, actually. Scump not going to push forward as well. Has he actually managed to get through? Yes, he has. Undetected Scump inside of the tunnel. That could be influential. Oh, Dashi with the check. There's one. There's the second. How's he turned on the Nero? TJ will even the odds. That's a little vivid. That's now a one versus two for Prolude. Oh. And my goodness me. Nothing happened. Then everything happened. Boston, get the round. It started. I thought that kill there. The two kills that come in from Dashi were going to be everything Optic needed. But the rest of the trades, the rest of it does not go their way. And Boston, get that first round locked in. Optic, with a tactical sneak, almost made magic happen, Tun. If Scump had that bomb, they could have got it down a little bit earlier. But, I mean, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Either way, he gets it and finds himself in a good position. If he can win his gunfight down inside the tunnel, it's maybe a different story. Dashi did ever so well to even find two. Ultimately, though, Boston find that first blood. They lock it down. Now for the side of Boston, looking like an air hit, as mentioned at the top of the show. 2 and 14 of their last 16 attempts over towards this A site have been unsuccessful. That grenade not going to find much either. Nobody lingering over towards the tank just yet. Dashi's made his way over there now. Shotzi, though, getting the angle. Nero will see in round number three. First blood over towards the side of Optic. the moment a little bit slow here boston trying to regroup trying to figure this one out scump just holding top you can see on the x-ray vivid and tj not really in a trade to get this here vivid looking for some way through they're gonna go for this plant again here and shots you've seen vivid's gonna see a player at the same time but he's just holding this forward and eventually boston are gonna back off the rotations come through they made their move but vivid Playing on an island. This is the kind of player he can be, but Shotzi will find one as they retake over towards A. The player rotating over towards B gets caught. TJ isn't going to find much there either as Shotzi finds a second. Fantastic stuff from the side of Texas. It just flew it. I, I really love that from them. As soon as they get a little bit of control over towards A, they take over that side of the map and it just tightens that grip on the side of Boston, who can do very little from that position. I'll take Texas. We'll tie this one up. Well, good rounds from them. That first blood really ton was just a difference maker. After that, Boston <laughs> just looked a little bit lost. But they have an opportunity. Back on the defense for them as well. TJ and Pro Loot both going at it. Shots and now three a reset. Complete reset, yep, yeah, as mentioned, but Shotzi on the three spree. Keep an eye on that as we do delve into some later rounds if you can continue this. Nope, well, no, he can't. There you go. Set up my whole point. Methods shuts him down immediately. First blood going over towards the side of Boston. Both defensive teams getting those first bloods each round. Prolute will answer back. Firefight in the middle. Ultimately results in a three versus two for Boston Breach. Now, can they set themselves up? Vivid's in a fantastic position. He can make a movement over towards B quickly. He can check A. Top bar on SMG. Perfect position for a defensive player on Bakash. Yeah, at the moment, up to a, a lot of trouble here. Vivid eventually going to get out of there at the same time. I don't know if he saw probably cross then. He might have done. Methods are also going to be looking for these players. And a little bit like shit to the night. He's just not going to see that player go tunnel away from him. Oh, my However, God. Did TJ see him either? No. How has he slipped the net here? He's just going all the way through. Probably has managed to get Vivid as well. But he might be cut down here. He is going to be as well. Chooses to play on the wrong side, unfortunately. Scum's going to go for the challenge as well. Run straight into TJ Halley. And Boston get another one on the board here. And that is uh, an interesting round, to say the least. Yeah, they were unlucky. And then all of a sudden, TJ's like, oh, wait. How has he got there? Those shredded it out. Just a couple of timing moments didn't go their way. Ultimately, though, the number at the top of the screen is the most influential one. They find the round. Defense reigning supreme so far. Boston Breach. Finding those first bloods and it's... Well, it's happening through everybody. I think it was Methods that round. I think it was Nero the round before. Not having to rely on Caps at all to be the one to find them for them. If it oh, certainly has a contribution. Yeah, he did. They know exactly where he is, but it's Shotzi. He will find a way out. I'm sure he's got some hidden ledge jump that just take him flying over the top of Granny's or something. 
Vivid, though, in a great position here. He may catch somebody if somebody gets a little bit too eager. He's got through, and I, I think he's just been seen as well. Picks wrong, dashy for as well. Shots, he takes down Nero. You said they knew where he was. He's somehow get out of it. He's done that as well. And TJ now in a one versus three, looking for Scum, does not get the kill he needs. And now will be hunted down. Every single angle has a player from Optic looking over it. And the squeeze comes through, and Texas hold their defense as well. 2-2, two, Tan. Two, and that's a shame for Boston, especially for TJ. False spree for him is immediately ended. Around and, well, maybe even somewhere close to a glide bomb would have been a fantastic way to continue to lead for Boston Bridge, but they can't quite get it done. Optic Texas hold their defense. It's been defense, 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 defense all the way through so far. Both teams very resolute in it. It's, it's coming down to... Not necessarily any aggressive place. Everyone's just setting up, holding their spots, finding their picks. So the defensive ones holding those angles that are the victors so far. Can we see a change of that potential scenery as we head into the next round? But not, nothing to, I was about to say nothing necessary to speak of, but TJ has found the first kill here for the defensive side once more. Pro will answer back three versus three. Shotty, unfortunately, gets gunned straight down by TJ. And bringing it back to a 3-3 doesn't matter if you instantly lose it again. But will the play coming from Prolude? He's going to see... And unfortunately, not going to work. Dashy now in a one versus three. But I just feel like they aren't going to really give him a lot of opportunity to get this one down. Doesn't know where these players are. Has to go hunting. Doesn't have the bomb either. And I wonder as the rounds do go on, are we going to see something maybe just a little bit different? I'll be honest, we didn't get to see the first uh, beginning of that round, so I wasn't too sure exactly how it was going down for the Optic side, but I'm curious if we're going to see anything quite aggressive over towards it. There's no attacking rounds of... went either team's way so far. It's all been about the defense, so I'm curious if we are going to see a bit of a change up here from either side. Defense has reigned supreme so far. Those first bloods are making the rounds as well. As far as I'm aware, every single time a team has found the first blood in these rounds so far, it has went over towards them. The round that is, of course, 9-2 out of TJ. Three in a row for him now once again. Can he maybe get something going? Oh, Dash is going to get caught. And that's the first, first blood we've seen when it has come down to an attacking round for an attacking team. Can they make it count? Oh, Scum pressure back to the three versus three. He's going to go out and then try for this one as well, but there's an oh, overlook. It's so obvious. It's a little bit of an over chow, but it comes down to a two versus two. Scum going for the rotation. He finds a player there. Has to get out of it. Methods with the pre-aim. Prolu's going to just jump in like a lunatic. And TJ up top of Gun Scump as well. It's down to a one versus one. TJ is on a five streak. As we hit this rotation, it could just be a matter of timing. There's plenty of time on the clock here, Bryce. For either one to maybe make a misstep or get a little bit more information. TJS is going to stick it here. So Prolute completely unawares. And this would be a first attack. This could be a huge one versus one in the grand scheme of things. Looking for it. Timing. Did he see him? Did he see him? I don't think he did. Timing is going to be everything, though. Prolu is making a right call, but is he going to find the right time? TJ has gone for the flag, and he yeah. Prolu, he's turned around. He's found it. He found it. Prolu found it eventually. He figured it out. An unbelievable. Managed to get it down. It's a three streak for him. Bomb defused. And the defenses keep on rolling, Ton. I think you might have heard him. TJ stomping around in the river. <laughs> Very well played in the end from Prolude. He was patient. Sometimes you will see some players maybe just rush over towards that bomb site and frantically start looking around, but he was patient. He thinks he had a good idea where TJ was, and he gambled correctly. Finds the round, and that is a crucial one. TJ, his reign of terror just keeps getting cut short every now and then. But look at this beat hit. That's going to start coming in here from Optic. They find two inside the river. Methods now needs a call for help. He needs to get out. As Vivid will find one to somewhat help Boston, but it's a three versus two in the advantage of Optic. And Optic, now they've cleared it down and going for this fast rotation. Trotsky will probably try and clear Tank from this location, but he's got to be careful if he does check it. At the moment, Optic are playing a little bit coy here. They don't really want to go for this yet. Right, he's going to slide across as well. Almost checks Vivid straight down. 
Stun going through as well. Is there going to be a player yes. in position for it? And he gets out. Look at Methods though. Are you ready for him coming in round from behind barn? Yes, they are. They're shotty. Is this the first attacking round? Vivid finds one, makes it one versus two. He dies. Optic find the first attacking round. And it's just about that aggression. I talked about it a couple of rounds ago. Are we going to see something different from one of these teams? It's been very passive, very neutral from both on these attacking rounds. This time around, we see three fly down river. And Optic Texas find the first two, and the round is. Pretty much a walk in the park from there. Boston Breach. All to do now. Optic found the attacking round. Is this going to be different? Can Optic hold this defense? Lock in the 5 3. More aggression coming out of Boston. Though. They're going to try the river hit themselves. Nade coming through. Nero's going to move forward as well, but Shossi will win it. Goes out to a 3 versus 3. Now a 3 versus 2. Boston have the numbers. Dashi going up to tower, trying to lock it down as well, and somehow Ooh, finds it. Eventually, oh. will go down himself. Oh, nicely done, Boston answer <laughs> back immediately with the same strat. And say, okay, well, they sent three down B. I think we should maybe try it. They do so. They find the opening kills and all that hard work to find an attacking round nullified immediately. Boston breach now back into this. Well, we said, can they hold it? But no. Four, four between these two here. Boston fired back with every bit as well they could. Can Optic find another attack? Or will this now be 5 4 to Boston? Well, goes back to a three versus three again. Trades all over the map, constantly here on Bocage. Great shots Wait. coming out from Vivid. To tie things up, yeah, now having a look at Optic and what kind of purchase they've got on the map. Scump is quite far pushed up over towards Granny's, but not really with any sort of purchase. They're in a good spot over towards B. TJ spotting them out, and we'll see you later. Prolute, a couple of pixels is all he needed. And the TJ reign of terror continues. 12 and 5. Well, you see, it's just a hint of a gun barrel. Scump with the eagle eyes. Eventually brings it through, but... Dashi and Scump, a two versus one now. And now it's all going to be on TJ. He's been the man for Boston. No obvious plant. They heard him. Huge rotate coming in from Optic again. They know where he is. They know he's top grannies. He opened those windows. Scump would have heard it. And he's clambering his way over towards grannies. Dashi might be there. TJ goes for the challenge, but is Scump going to be from behind? Yes, he is. Another attacking round. Once one comes... Another three alongside of it. It's like buses, Bricey. Boston Bridge cannot hold the defense and Optic Texas will find the attack. And, and, and to be honest with you, I, I, I want to criticize Vivid there. He had a hold of the tank. He's in that prime position to watch over here and he pushes out to check it. Like, I I don't know. I think in that situation, you you got to hold tight. It's a very crazy s &D so far. These teams are winning rounds on knife edges. Just the tiniest of trades coming through, but it is Optic. They have defense. They have five rounds. Can they find the sixth right here and now to shut it down? Nero didn't see him. Nero didn't see him. Who is that? It's going to be Shotzi. Of course it is. He's hitting the flank. He's going to find the first blood, but it comes back to a three versus three again. And now Shotzi's all alone. They're going to know he's behind them somewhere. And that creates a problem. It always does. Oh, vivid. Living on a wing and a prayer just about gets away with 16 HP and two kills go Boston's way. They know where Shotzi is, and it's a one versus three. How Making a one versus two. I have no idea. This is doable. Well, here we go. Shotzi needs the correct timing for this Surely one. TJ's ready this. for him as well, and he is going to get him. It's a 5-5 five, five here on Bacard S&D. <laughs> These rounds are great. Honestly, when Shotzi finds his way behind there, I'm not thinking it's a wrap, but Optic can just sit tight and, and kind of wait for something to happen. Yes, Boston know, know that he's there, but Shotzi being behind you is good information to have, but it's also terrifying information. So what, what do you do with that? They all turn around, they keep an eye on him, but then they find the kills from Optic who then push up. Fantastic work from the side of Boston to force around number 11. It's going to be Optic on the defense and Boston, can you continue this with the attacks? 14 and six out of TJ. He's been a behemoth, but he goes down immediately. 3v4 and there goes your star player.
Oh my goodness, Boston's big gun has been removed. Pro loot with a nade. Vivid going to be looking to see if he can bring this back to a 3 versus 3 again in this S&D. He's desperately looking for anybody from Optic to make a mistake. Anybody to push just a little bit too far. But Optic are holding. They are not moving at the moment. They are holding their angles and they are waiting for Boston to push. Boston are the ones waiting for them as well. Dashi. Very dynamic when it comes down to this back town by Vivid. He slipped through the tunnel. Did they see him? That could be hellish as the bomb goes down. It's a 4v3. Vivid finds one from behind. Doesn't get traded. 3v3 still. They've got a hump from him as well. Vivid has just gone all the way across. Shotty with the geek gunfight in the middle of that. Vivid gets another one. It's now down to a 2 versus 1. And Methods has found it. A 1 versus 1. Methods versus Pro Loot. And that time is ticking away. He's going to go through these doors here. He smashes through. And Pro Loot is going to come behind him. It's an easy kill in the end. Optic walk away with it, but it was not clean. It was not easy. But it doesn't matter. Two to zero to Optic Texas here in this game. Oh, it's a big, big round. But I feel like Methods has a little bit more time. He, he, he goes into Granny's like a ball in a china shop. There's doors, there's windows being opened, there's things being broken, there's so much noise. And Prolio has one of the easier kills as he goes around the back. It's very difficult in the moment, but it felt like he had a lot of time there. Boston nearly called it back. You lose TJ immediately after what kind of performance he's had on Bukaj so far. The worst start to the round possible. But what a game that was. Three first bloods for Shotzi. When it does come down to first bloods, it's dead even across the board. But it's Optic who come out on top. Two close maps, but ultimately Optic, the ones in the driving seat now. Well, Boston have, I will say, silver lining looked pretty good against Optic. Like those rounds have not been clean. It came down to a one versus one on the SD. Gavudu, obviously, a 30 point difference is still not enough, but the truth of the matter is, Boston need these points. Optic are 2 0 up in the series, and Tuscan control is next time. Yeah, that, that, that's a hard one to bear for the side of Boston. And I believe that A attack still eludes them. I, I would say it didn't necessarily, well, it didn't work out in that last round, did it? Of course, Pro Loot coming through. And I, I'm not 100% sure how many times they went over there, but that's something they may well have to work on. Of course, it is never easy when you're constantly down that first blood when it comes to those attacking rounds. Optic win the coin flip, so to speak. Get that defensive hold for that 11th round. And it's Perulu who gets the job done. I, I want to say he maybe found three kills in that round to end things off. And this is the guy we talk about so many times. Can he fill those shoes? How long does he have to fill those shoes for? There's so many questions and so many things to talk about. And just not enough time, Bryce. Well, you say that, but we'll, we'll find out. Speaking yeah, we'll of which, though, obviously, two maps are gone. The third is now on the horizon. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this quick break for map number three. It's Tuscan Control. It's Optic Texas and Boston Breach. We'll see you right after this.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew and Zenny. Armor your eyes with blocks gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com slash cdl. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We are in a game. Optic Texas versus Boston Breach. Currently, 2-0 to zero to Optic. But it has been very close. Map's turn. Is there a way back for Boston Breach? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I want to say yes, but Tuscan controls the next map, and that does never bode well for anyone against Optic Texas. This is a very, very solid map from themselves. Let's see if they can continue the good form. But, you know, for Boston, it... it it doesn't feel like they've been that far away. It really doesn't. But these finite moments, these big moments, did not go their way. In map number one, they did not go their way. In map number two, and I'd hazard a guess it probably won't do won't go their way in map number three. Let's see. As we head into Tuscan, Pro Luton Cup already on their way over towards it. Trying to lock this one in nice and early. Pretty standard start so far. Nero going to the God Heady, and that's why it's known as that. Wins that gunfight even after losing the first few bullets. Just going trying to look two directions at once. He really needs somebody to back him up here. Otherwise, he's not going to have a good time doing it. Speaking of which, a few trades going on all over the map. One tick on the A for Optic so far, but no real map control. They'll be looking for their next push forward time. Not so bad for Boston here. Find a couple of kills, but Optic very flexible. And it does come down to their attacking prowess. Prolip will find a kill over towards B as Optic finds some kills over towards A as well. Shotzi already over towards the spawn side of things when it comes down to B. Two-pronged attack here from Optic. Dashi finding three in a row from him. Now we'll just push up. Look from that point of view. They know they have pitches over towards B. So what's the point in sitting on A when you can maybe get the big fish? Heading over towards B now. Dashi's behind them waiting on the rest of his team finding some sort of positioning here. Finds the first. Boston will have to try and get this one again, but there are many players against him. Dashi finds two, but not the third. Doesn't line up for him. Prolu, though, coming in for the trade. Scump is now looking for the last player they know. He's going to be here, and Methods gets gunned down. Here are more players, and Scump is just not able to win every single gunfight, unfortunately. But the pressure is still on. Optic are making this a chaotic control at the moment. And it's chaotic, but it's also very, very fluid from the side of Optic. They see a door. They see it's open. They will go through it. When an opportunity presents itself over towards B, Ultimately, though, we get to this sort of stage. 30 seconds remaining. Two ticks nearly over towards A. You've got to make sure you lock that one in. You have a five life advantage. Let's see if you can make it count. So push over towards A is going to have to come in shortly and maybe have they overstayed their welcome over towards B here, Bryson. They might have done scum need to win that gunfight. TJ gets away with his life. The other thing you've got to bear in mind here, Tan, is ticks do matter. They do. An optic only have one. They're going to go. Gotta go now, Shotzi surviving. Where's the rest of the team to help him out? Need to win the gunfights here. Nero will find one. TJ trying his best to stay alive and he's jumped off the map. But nonetheless, hey, looking like it is gonna go over towards Optic Texas. But Boston, with the lives that they have remaining, it makes sense to challenge for this because you might be in a bad spot over towards B. Oh, they get them off it. They get them off it. <laughs> Optic, you're gonna have more on there. Oh, Optic weren't in a bad position oh, either. get to see it as well, yeah, yeet. <sighs> and that round ends with a nade. Optic push forward. They were ready to snap the trap shut. If they had got A, they would have gone B with life advantage. And a nade ends it. Low ticks there. I didn't see exactly how many ticks came in. I was too busy worrying about what Skump was doing, but that was not a good round from Optic in the end. I want to say they maybe got two or three. Did they get one over towards B? I, 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 I don't think know. they got... I, I'll be honest with you. I'd have to go back and check. They had one last time I checked, but then went on to A. Well, that's a really good start for Boston, nonetheless. I mean, that is not much made up from the side of Optic, and it's looking like Boston are already going to do one step better. Progress over towards A. Optic might just have a little look at that one now, though, as probably will find one. TJ, Vivid, answering back. That's a... Fairly clean wipe for the side of Boston. Dashi will answer back, but that is A, done and dusted. So you go a step further than Optic have done already. Whatever happens the rest of this round, you have a tick advantage. Wow, it's a, it's a Boston resurgence already coming through here. And Optic are going to be under a significant amount of pressure. You can already see the Boston stack coming through. Trying to just get through this one with the kills as well. And Scump trying to get away with his life. TJ looking for him at the same time. He's weak and TJ is through, Tan. 
That's a little bit of purchase. And then, well, welcome to the Boston Breach. <laughs> Vivid throwing grenades at his teammates, but in these sort of scenarios, when he's up close and personal in your face, these are the places you want Vivid. Dashi, oh, gets a little bit of bad timing, but Vivid's still lingering around these areas where he can be such a nuisance, surviving as best he can, still surviving somehow. Is the rest of the team there to help him out? Not quite. Optic will find some crucial kills. Not sure how they found so many so cleanly. CJ finds two, though, still a little bit of purchase here for Boston. Well, this is it, Optic. Oh, facing a bit more pressure than they probably would like here onto this one. A couple of kills going through. Push coming through from Vivid, and will be taken down instantly. Optic may not have the lives, but this position is always good for any team defending. You just cannot afford to have a slip in the worst possible way. And you see already pushing out, Prolu's gonna find that kill at the same time. He knows somebody's probably gone underneath. Has read that one perfectly. He knows Nero's gonna be near him. Nero doesn't care, chances him anyway. And had a little flick back. On the stream there, but I see it was one single tick for the side of Optic, so that is terrible. If I'm honest with you, I was kind of praising the way that they, I, I want to say that the way that they take on an attacking round is very, very fluid, but you've got to kind of lock in that A point. And well, Boston Breach might go even a step further here. B's looking good for them. Okay, then. Okay. <laughs> what? Why? Why is there a grenade there? Stop Why? Everybody! <laughs> Why is there a grenade there? Oh, well, TJ with too much uh, fragging on the map. Optic still have the opportunity. Not as many lives they could do, though. 40 seconds left. Boston Breach. What can they make of this? Can they find the trades they need? Can they find the kills? The scum goes flying out towards it as well. The lives. Just slowing this push down as well. well. Oh, my goodness. The kills have come through now. It's disastrous for Optic. Chelsea could try and make a hero play, but a player is behind him as well, and it's now Dashy, the only player left, but it is Dashy, and down he goes. Breach, take that one as well, and they are now up 2-0 to zero in the control time. Uh, TJ laughing. <laughs> He's counting his lucky stars there. If they'd lost that round, uh, well, I don't think he would have heard the end of it, but Boston reached 2-0 to zero up, and by the way, the difference in those ticks, even if Optic can bring this back here, it would, it would take quite something to force the defense. It, it's only three. I don't believe that. Not for a single second. I, I think Optic only got one. Yeah, they got one. So it's a five tick difference. Yeah, five. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. No, maybe it depends on, on uh, if he died. Yeah, Boston only got four. Oh, well, there you go then. Max is not my strong point. Production no, not, I was wondering where you were going. Yeah, he died. <laughs> okay, but there you go. Sorry, production. I, would... I know it's been a while. I know it has. This is this is everything now. Let's get back on track because Optic have a mountain to climb. They have so much work to do. I'm kind of very curious to find out how they are feeling. So let's jump to a listening with Optic Texas. Warren, okay. Well, back our TT. Yeah, I'm top three. I'm top three. Top, 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 top church city. I'm only mid. Z, there's that A. One shot, there's that A. Hit it, hit it, hit it. One shot, you. One shot, absolutely on you. You can force it. You can force it. Other one, one shot, you. One shot, you. He's on dead. He's on dead. What could be B, man? I'm named Daddy. He's really guard city. He went to Daddy. Actually, I'm stuck. I'm stuck you. I'm stuck you. I'm in front of you. I'm in front of you, Brandon. I'm in front of you. Can you make teach dead? I'm trying you. I'm trying you. Brandon, actually. What could be under our fire? Yeah, Brandon, Brandon. I'm trying to watch Pinson. What? Yeah, they could be at mid right now. They could be at mid. I'm up you. Yeah, one's I'm well. Yo, he's there. Third side. What's Yeah, I'm one shot right now, Brandon. You're low. Well, I need it. I need it as well. When they from church. I see them. You, you, you. Nice. Just you. 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 Just you push up radio. There's two. Two push up radio. Oh, I'm only beaming. I have beaming. Three right. Three right side of the map. You guys are only missing one. Like, I'm in church right now. I'm in church. I have yo. One sh army beaming. Close right. They're trying to take our target. They're trying to need me. They're trying to need me. I'm in need up. I'm in need up. I'm in need up. They didn't chop me. They didn't chop me. You hit anything? I didn't hit you. I didn't shoot. I didn't shoot. Bye. I'm top three. Close right. Close right. Yeah, close right. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Okay. Right, one is pushing up. Hold radio. Hold radio. You guys obviously keep one of them. Top three teams. Dead one more. Stay up. Stay up. They're gonna try you. They're gonna try you. The one might be to play well. There's two. Well, there's one to be main. One to be main. Yeah, I'll let you main. Yeah, top main, top main, Zin. That's a different guy. That's a different guy. One, one push high roof. All right, one push high roof for sure. Reese, Reese, Reese is push high roof. He has to be. Yeah, he's in there. Reese, good call, dead, dead, dead. Let's work with whoever this is for me. I'm looking mid, yep. Yeah. No, I'm not on B main. I'm on B main. Top church. Nothing on our side. Like low B main or some shit. Nothing. You guys did, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. 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 I did.
Well, Optic Tex is trying to figure out this puzzle, trying to break through here, Tan, desperately. Comms just flying left, right, and center. But can they find the kills to match? It's such an awkward angle that Prolute is going to push through from this alley. Needs the rest of his team to be here with him. Methods will get dispatched out, but up top, Platt, TJ, and Nero have been locking this down for quite some time. And that has more kills on the board for Nero. They're flying on through. Shotzi next on the board, not quite. Just going to find a kill over towards map, so Optics still do have opportunity here. 30 seconds left to go. Do they take their time and set up, or do they just fly on through? It was ambitious from Shotty. I would have, I wouldn't have minded him just taking his time there. Went for the rest of his team. Nero finds two. That might be done and dusted. I think it is. Can Optics find any magic in the last few seconds here? Shotzi uh, and Dashley managed to get two. 17 seconds left remaining. It's go time. The green wall has got to get on this now. Dashley desperately trying to look over as well, but TJ is equal to it. Guns in methods with the nade at the same time. Prolude now basically has to just try and make magic happen with Scum. They have to stop the clock to let their teammates get through, but it's an eight versus four, and already one goes down, and Scump finds two. But there unless go. he's got a teleport, he is not making that point. And Boston, blow Optic out of the control, three to zero. And it was looking a little bit shaky there from Optic. I mean, they've only lost that map three times this year. 13 and three record, goes to 13 and four. Boston were just six and six on that, and they've blown them out of the water. It has to be said, it feels like some missteps from Optic, especially on that very first round, not even getting over towards A. I, I don't know, that was very, very disjointed. And for all that, the first two maps were close, Optic were clutching up. They did anything but there. And that's a three to zero sweep, and that's Boston well and truly back into this series with a win like that. And will give them so much confidence, and Optic will be asking questions of themselves after that. Yeah, and Boston just looked good. That's uh, the best way to put it. And Optic, you know, after a very aggressive start in round number one of the control, really failed to kind of step up for the rest of the series. You saw them like kind of just dominating. They were running around, they were getting the life advantage, they were making things difficult for Boston. And then that last part of round number one felt like the end of optic on control realistically from that point onwards boston breached with a better team they were slaying better they had the positions going through big plays out of so many of them as well like nero for instance just everywhere they needed nero him well tj it was yeah. it was not a pretty picture for a for an optic fan but if you are a boston fan looking much better uh, TJ's been frying the whole series, his teammates included, actually, in, the, in that second round, of course. Imagine they didn't do that. That's a completely different story, but Nero and Vivid combining well together. TJ, as mentioned, has had been having a very good series outside of map number one. And I wonder, we're, we're heading into a Bukaj hardpoint now. Vivid on the squad, notorious for his engagements on this map. I wonder... <laughs> it's a very good question. It is a very good question. Vivid has been looking pretty nice. And going on to the Bacage, we'll have to see what goes through. I wonder how much that has wounded the pride of Optic on that control here. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I don't think Rambo Ray will be very happy about that one, Royce. I, I, honestly, I think, you know, 2 to 0 up comfortable in the series. You're going on to arguably your best map and mode just in general. You expect to close that one out and you get 3 to 0. That's one of those moments that, that are occasionally in series that you can look at and sort of say, well, I, I mean, that these can be turning points. You're heading in now into a Bacaj hard point. We know what this map can be like. It can be a little bit crazy. It can be a little bit random at times. And yes, Optic have a better record on it than Breach do. But as mentioned, that change for Breach maybe makes the difference here. Can they force a map number five? And then all of a sudden, we're in a very, very different scenario, aren't we? As we head over towards Berlin, Surge and Destroy, if we do indeed get there. But I don't know. That that, that could be the start of the reverse sweep now, Bryce. Yeah, I, I, the optic of, of allowed Boston to walk through the potential sweep door here. It's not the kind of opportunity you want to be given a team like Boston. It's it's really interesting. Kind of optic look. I want to say, I want to say Boston looked better, right? Take the positives from that one. Boston obviously had a very good control map, but there were maybe at least in my mind, considering how highly we rate Optic and the players on that team, maybe too many mistakes on the control. Maybe yeah. a few too many hero plays. Shotzi's having an off day. 
like, and we saw, like, you, we, we kind of talked about, I think it was in the list, and then, like, Shotzi managed to get all the way to B, and then managed to get all the way back out of B, but he was still, like, 9 and 17, and there are other 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 little things I saw, like, you had two members of Optic in P5, and Shotzi flies into the B control point to stop the clock, but nobody from Optic was really there to challenge anything, because obviously he comes through radio, so you just set the players in p5 to maybe try and push towards platform back him up or at least try to get that trade going through but they both stood there pre-aiming expecting maybe somebody to flank radio so yeah one could do that but why would two do it and it, it's it's tiny little things like that that maybe made optic seem a little bit disjointed on that map and i'm sure right now that has already been flagged for a vod review because I'm, uh, they're definitely going to have to take a relook at that control as well but None of it matters as much, though, as potentially this hard point. Going into it here, Dashie's KD this series has been fantastic. Can he keep that up on the hard point? Probably, I'm not going to give him too much about a 0.78. A couple of really clutch kills in that search and destroy. Very much make up for that on the side of Boston, though. TJ, as mentioned, has been having a series at a 1.16. Methods? Considering where he has been this year, you would expect a little bit more than that. But let's see, can they turn around specifically methods here on Picard? Well, it's not necessarily the best map to do it on for an AR, but hey, you never know. You never know when it does come down to Vanguard, Percy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. And I almost thought that went down, but we just changed player. Just looking for this one as well. Three points so far. And if anything, I know about Picard with Optic, it always seems to go to time rather than points. And this is one of the reasons why. P1 never really that scrappy, is it? When it comes down to getting a hold of these points, it's very, very difficult to do so. It's almost about just positioning, posturing over towards P2. Right now, it is Boston Breach with that side of the spawn. What can they do with it? I wonder. But looking over towards Bacage Hardpoint Optic, 84% of the hills they get over towards and they lock in, they do indeed hold for more time. So can they do that here with this rotation over towards P2? It's not going to come in for them. It will be the Boston Bridge in the lead. And Boston Bridge in control of P2. Oh, oh my god. Optic. Not really able to find anything going through. And now P2 is up and they are farming them over <laughs> and over again. Nero barely even pausing to take a breath as he looks for more players. Another one goes down. That's five. There's oh. number six. Oh, no, sorry, there's five. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just assuming Nero's going to get more. And look at Optic here as well, because Boston Bridge, they know they are so far pushed up. Optic have to take their time. This is just free time for the side. A Boston TJ on another six spree. This man hasn't been able to be stopped throughout this series. Can he find the seventh here, which would be a very, very early glide bomb? He cannot. There's plenty more time to try and get another one of those. Let's shot see with the challenge around the corner on the first. A little bit of life here for the side of Optic Texas. Right now... They haven't had a sniff, Pricey. It's 54. It's going to be 65 by the time we get over towards P3. And if Optic even showed up here, I mean, what has happened since map number two? Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to tell you, Tan. But there's Optic with a point on the board. Jesus. Just two points here for them. And Shotzi now has to hold fire as the rest of his team I mean, hit the respawn. He goes down as well. And Boston... Boston have found some new form here. It's like an animate. They've powered up, ready for this reverse sweep. And Optic Texas, words are failing me. They are struggling to make an impact. I mean, Nero is flying around the map like Prime Scump here. This is ridiculous. He's 12 and 4, Vivid 8 and 3. There is nothing going wrong, wrong for the side of Boston. But look at Nero, he's still going. Dash is the only one who can answer. Then he's taken down as well. Boston Breach are smoking up to Texas here. It's 100 to 2. <laughs> And TJ's on another streak, and he's just running through mid map, and he fights. finds all. Oh, eventually, gets taken down, but the kill oh feed, the kill feed God. is still Boston. They flip them straight out here. Optic cannot hold anything. This is not a game. This is a lesson at the moment. Boston breach. A lot of people have overruled them. We said they had a hard schedule, but not if this keeps on going. Not if they can find this kind of fire in the tank. Nero Optic Texas, <laughs> Optic Texas, looking like they've just rolled in. What from a bar? Is that what we're I, trying I, to I, say? I don't know. Drunk? I don't know what I don't what's going on? What's failing me? Boston. Nineteen to five out of Nero here. Is it going to be twenty? Who Stop knows? Like... 
This is absolutely insane. Optic Texas have nine points. They need to regain very, very quickly now. Looking over towards the rotation, over towards P5. We're heading towards boat. This is where you can get some time. Optic holding 84% of the hills up because this season, by the way. That's first ranked when they lock down the hill. They haven't held anything, Brycey, so far. Well, <laughs> River might something. be the start. Who knows? Bacage can always turn. It can always turn, but they have to win some gunfights. And Dashley eventually gets one down into it as well, but the pressure is still coming through. Boston. They have looked brilliant. They have looked great so far on this Bacage. Can they keep it going? A shot he eventually finds two. But Optic are not on the point, and they are still over a hundred points down. Time for the regain for Optic Texas. This is much better from them. Nero will find a chink in the armor, which has been battered so far throughout the majority of this Bacage. But Optic Texas have found a rip back through. Boston will get a momentary relapse here over towards P5, but. Punts will go over towards Texas. That is much, much better and a much, much needed hold from the side of Optic. Pretty much perfect over towards P5. They will get around 40 points on the board before Boston do find a breakthrough. But hey, I tell you what, if Boston Breach were told, they'd be heading into the second rotation with what, an 80 point lead. They'd have snapped your hand off pricing. Well, when you've got Nero going 23 and 10, it's not that difficult. And Nero continues to be a problem for Optic. Looking for them once again here. They're just trying to find enough kills to bring this one back. And again, 100 points behind almost for Optic. They need to start milking some of these hard points, getting these points back as well. But to stop a Boston breach in this kind of form, it's easier said than done. Things starting to wake up a little bit for Texas here, but this rotation over towards P2 is going to be crucial for them. They can do with locking this one in TJ already here. Shotzi, the next potentially on the chopping block. Things have slowed down just a little bit for the Boston Breach, but is that gap that they have built far too large for the side of Optic Texas to try and bring back? The answer that question feels like it could be yes, but plenty of time on because you're very, very right. When it comes down to it, this map can be crazy, but a 100 point difference at this stage is somewhat of a mountain to climb for the side of Optic. They eventually get the spawns here and they just have to get a little bit of a clear of Boston out to try and make this come back because Boston are determined to hold this 100-point lead over and over again. TJ causing an issue for him as well. Stays alive, and that means they have to deal with him. Nobody on the point here for Optic as they try to clear their lines, eventually going down. Somebody, please, get on the point. You need them. And now Optic. Here we go. Is this going to be a reversal? Are okay. they going to somehow find the magical comeback? This has potential. Shots are starting to heat up now. A streak would definitely help them on their way. A glide bomb can do multiple things on this map. Just playing his life for it. The rest of his team slowing down, trying to bait for him, or do you need to when it does come down to it when you are Shotzi? Pushing over towards the back. TJ will be the next to fall. He's one away now, finds his way in. Can they find the break here? As said, when those hills have been in the control of Optic Texas, they are hard to break for a side like Boston. Optic will find the flip here at the perfect opportunity, the perfect time. They will lock in control of P3. And that comeback is just becoming a little bit more possible here for the side of Optic. Oh, you can see the pressure now on for Optic. They're going to try and hold this one as well, but Nero punches straight through Scump. Kills fortunately go through his team as well, and Prolude has got the pre-aim now. He knows where they're coming for. Shotty though, going on more of a mission. He's just farming them. He's trying to push them all the way through. Needs to be a bit careful. He will respawn and get straight back into this fight here. But Optic are clawing back the points slowly, but surely. And apparently that's quite difficult for me to say, but you can see it happening. But if the kills come through for Boston again, it could be disastrous. It's been a hell of a swing in the last couple of hills for Optic to try and get themselves back into this spot. Just feels like Boston ran out of steam a little bit here. Optic will still be 40 points behind. It's still a good lead for Boston when it comes down to Bacaj. But can you steady the ship? Can they break it now? Methods holding down fences, looking for any player that dares to challenge his teammates. You see Dashy up top as well, and Dashy takes a few bullets at the same time. Oh. Eventually wins that gunfight as well. Maybe going to get gunned by Scump at the same time. Dashy uh -oh. and Scump combining here at the same time. Nero going through, oh. Nero finds two. Dashy eventually gets that one locked in. And Optic break this hill for more points that they need back onto the board. 
but Picard is never easy and it's always mixy. That's why a comeback can be difficult for you, especially on this hard point. Yeah, just come from the side of Boston if you can just contest as best as you possibly can just to try and slow down what is somewhat of an inevitable comeback by the side of Optic here. TJ Vivid combining well, shots he off the top line. We'll find TJ. Nero's there to try and slow it down. But what was once... I want to say about 120 points was it? I don't know if I'm just still imagining it at this point. Is now down to 20. The rotation Jump here the is there for Boston, but as you said, that glide bomb from Shotzi is coming in and it's coming in hot. All the call outs. They'll be spitting into the Optic Texas cam right now as Shotzi calls out every single player Bro. he can, but they have to win the gunfights. Prolude and Shotzi towards the back. They're looking for the player up top, and it's going to be Meth as he goes down as well. Optic, look to make this chaotic. They know where Methods is. Still, gets the kill. They still know where Methods is, as Methods is just being a pain. Doing a good job. Oh, a good stun. Staying alive here, though. The thing is, with him being alive, it's hard for Optic to get inside the point and get much time. But there you go. The break comes through. For all that, Boston did have that rotation, Brycey. He didn't really get a load of points off it. That guy bomb comes in. And I don't think anybody from Boston has been on the point since then. And, well, nobody from Optic is now on the point. As the grenade finds its way through to Scump. TJ will get himself onto the point for the final five seconds. Boston are where they want to be. Optic or not. But I tell you what. It was an 80-point lead for Boston on that end of the first rotation. We head into the third. It is about a 30-point one, so that gap has been reduced. Can Optic finally complete the job with the comeback, or can Boston force them up number five? Tan, Tan, keep an eye on that top number, that middle number as well. Time is ticking. Every second this is contested or a player is not on that point, it is looking like we could end up on time here. I know P1 teams don't like to jump in, but you have to keep aware there's only 55 seconds left on this clock. Contests may matter. Up they're going to have to find a way through, Barn. They're going to have to find a way through the resolute defense of the Boston Breach, who are now setting themselves up over towards P2. That gap is as small as it has been in quite some time. About 20 points, but now rising as Boston Bridge will start to get the final little bit of scrap here over towards P1, but you've got to be careful not to overcommit. A team like Optic can find these couple of kills, and all of a sudden you have your spawns being flipped, but they have not overcommitted. Vivid is in the perfect spot. This is better from Boston. A 45 kill game out of Nero, and there is plenty more time for him to find kills, and this is a bit more like it from Boston. P2 control, they can win it here. They certainly can, and Optic are being pushed all the way back. Methods is trying to open up here onto the tank. Well played. And desperately, desperately, Optic are surging forward for this one, trying to get their way through at the same time. They get onto this point. It's contested. They get through, but Nero at the back again. It's Nero, oh. the hero, over and over again as Boston shut Optic out of this hill. And Methods is now going farming himself. This P2 has not been good for Optic. It has not been good the last time around. Scum's gonna go. And there are seven seconds left. Hero plays are the name of the day here, and Scump has arrived. Can you imagine Boston not getting five points within the next couple of hills, though? That's the question. They can still end it here. Methods will find the kill. That's enough time. Now Boston on the rotate. It's actually going to be TJ here. And this is going to be difficult now for the side of Optic because they've got to clear him out. They've got to clear everybody else out. Nero's inside the point, but Optic get the rotation, but they do not have the spawns. Well, this is it. Optic have to get in, but unfortunately, even the contest won't really matter for them as Methods hold on this first one. He's pre-firing as well. Scum goes down, and that's going to be it. Boston have taken down Optic. It's now 2-2. The reverse sweep has been ridden into the stars, but will it be solidified? Map 5 awaits us. And it's a terrible start from Optic and a better finish. Unfortunately, not good enough. Boston Breach are looking to upset on their route to a fantastic qualifier. This is going to be huge for them if they can lock this one down. It's a casual 49 and 33 from Nero. Oh. 5,500 damage. That man was running around shooting suns out of his MP40. That was and insane. Mode. <laughs> that, that, bro, I, I don't even know what I tell you. 32 non traded kills against a team that has Shotzi in it on Bacage. That is incredible. A Herculean effort from Nero at 49 and 33. Drags Boston Breach into a map number five up against Optic Texas. How have we found ourselves here? Considering what map number three was. Percentage-wise, 
It is Optic's best map. And they get 3 0 on it. We head to Bakaj Hardpoint. Statistically, Optic significantly better than Broston on it. But the vivid effect is real. Nero is released, and all of a sudden we have number five. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the, the, the first two minutes of that Bakaj were, were quite bewildering. I. And honestly, yeah. after after the first rotation, after the first four hills, Optic were pretty decent. But unfortunately, when you get two or three points in the first four hills of Bacage, <laughs> it, it somewhat doesn't matter how decent you are for the rest of the map because Boston were in such a commanding lead. I want to say it was about 120 to three at one stage. I, I was actually too bemused by what I was seeing to actually remember at this stage, but it, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that. that it's like crazy. a combination of things, right? It's obviously Nero just doing incredible damage, oh. 5,500, oh. and also the fact that he went like 49 and 33 or whatever it was. That, that's difficult to overcome with. Optic seemed a little bit like they just didn't start the map, and maybe that was the control reverberating through. But it's enough talking about the past. We have to move into the future. Map 5 is coming here. It's Optic versus The Breach. We'll see you right now after this.
Upgrade your game with a SCUF, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The stage is set for a very, very intense map. Number five, Optic took the first two maps here in this series, and then Austin Breach have fired back with all guns. They have looked like a little bit of a different team, a team that we are now re-evaluating how we think about them. Is this Boston reaching brand new heights now that Vivid has joined? Or is this just a glimpse as to what could be held for the future? I'm looking forward to find out. But before that, of course, we will get into this one. We go on board with Berlin S&D and uh, Tan, close. It is close. It's not a bad map for either one of these two teams, both with very decent records. Of course, looking over towards the offensive wins, that's really where these two teams are very, very close with first boston with second defensively though boston ever so slightly better it's a very very difficult one to call it's going to be a very very close game and what has been a crazy crazy series but here we go into round number one maybe boston hitting over towards a very very quickly here bryce nero continuing where he left off and he somehow found a way through <laughs> bro look what we watching bro unreal just slid straight underneath and those teammates to get through and now Vivid is in the site, looking for this plant desperately. Dash in pro loot, and a two versus three. Surely this has to be all sewed up from Boston. You would think so. Oh, TJ. Yeah, he slept in that pro loot, should be dead. He is dashy, unable to trade that out from where he is as well. It's a tough one. It's going to be a first round over towards the side the Boston breach but yeah it just comes down to the fact that Nero can find himself in that position it's actually in the one versus two maybe it's not impossible but improbable it's more than likely the word I like to use here should be dead is dead Boston start off Berlin exactly how they wanted wow what a revival from this team first round of Boston And if you're an Optic fan, it's just not been it for the last couple of maps. They have to find the regain, the mental game here, to just get something back on the board. Optic will be on the attack this time. And magic can happen. Looks like a B hit from them, but it's also a B hit from Boston. Oh, Boston not going to be the ones who win the gunfights, though. And Optic... Oh! have just completely fallen apart what is going on boston with another round and it's just so aggressive optic not ready and boston i was about to say i look pumped up but well not really but either way <laughs> things are looking good look at that boston breach so we had a hard schedule they're making it look easy in the second half of this game if we only had the second half to judge, we would say they were leagues above Optic, who have not really been anything like the team we expect them to be. Vivid on a 3-0, Methods on a 2-0. Attack again here from Boston. Texas need to find some stable ground. And they just read that perfectly there. With the side of Optic Texas, most of their rounds heading over towards a fast beat. Winning 50% of them as well. Not that one, though. Shotty will find a first bullet for them, though. Over towards their side. Now Boston. Have one less member to try and find an attacking route over towards A. Make that two less members. Is now it is a two versus four. And Optic looking to finally get on the board here in map number five. Oh, Demethys managed to take down Scum, but I don't know if it's going to be everything here. A one versus four technically on the board. 3-0 at the moment, but doesn't have bomb and to look for shots. He actually calls it perfectly. He knows exactly where he's going to be. One versus two. Methods. Never mind, Ashley. <laughs> it's always a hard one. And, uh, yeah, it's always a hard one. Does really well to find the first two, but that one was pretty much sewn up as an optic round after those first two kills. Nicely done. Find themselves a way back into it. The bleeding stops. That may be enough what they need. Everybody talking about optic regain, optic regain. They can get this, bring it back to a two versus two. I feel a little bit more comfortable. This time, look 
looking for more pressure towards the A site. Nothing towards B this time around. Another kind of attacking round that Boston like to do. We'll keep an eye out for on the next one. It's kind of a neutral setup. We'll watch out for that. But as I said, the fast B tends to be the way that things go for Optic. Not overarching on that side of things. Their neutral setup is nice as well. Which is what they've gone for now. It's all about these picks. But Boston, I don't think they'll give this one away. Uh, both teams just holding steady. And I think Optic want Boston to move. They're trying to find some information. They want to figure out where this team is. And Boston are not giving them an inch. They are not giving them any inclination as to where they could possibly be. And that means Optic now have to try and be proactive. They have to make this push themselves. Push over towards it. Oh, they're just like that. You find the pick. Vivid inside of the office as well. It's going to have to do some magical, magical work. Shotty will be the first to fall. Pro Loop will come in though and trade that. Now it's a tough retake. They do have Nero on the flank. It's a great need from TJ. But he will get traded. Pro Loop. Oh, it's going to be left on his own as Nero now finds the kill. So well played. And Boston Breach find the round. The nades and the plays. And Nero just in the right position at the right time. And Boston Breach go three to one up. It looked like it was possible then for Optic. But Boston, three rounds away from a reverse sweep against Optic Texas. That certainly was not in the pickums to begin with, Tun. Honestly, when I seen that they were two to zero down, we had Tuscan control. I think me, you, and absolutely everybody else on the planet would have had a three to zero Optic written all over it. The fact that we're here, the fact that Optic are now behind is somewhat bewildering. Forget what happened to Bacage now, but Pro Luton Co trying to bring this one back near a little bit too aggressive, maybe feeling himself a little bit too much. TJ will answer back. Reverses two in favor of Optic. TJ brings it back to a two All versus right. two. Optic had the two-man advantage. That is now gone. Pro Loop will be the player to call this. He will call for scum reinforcements as soon as he sees it goes across. And that should be both players. You know, there. Scum's going to go for a flank. This comes down to individual gunfights. TJ will get those doors smashed as well. A little bit of trouble doing so, but is Scump going to check it? Will Methods hear him? Oh, so close, but so far for the King. Surely he gets him. spotted. Surely he's dead. Methods will find it. And this was a two versus four. Probably now has to find both these players and defuse. And I'll be honest with you, there's absolutely no way they give him any chance of it. They don't win the gunfight. He'll be shouldering all day long. It doesn't matter. Wow. Methods locks it down on Boston Breach. Boston Breach go up four to one. That is, the a two, ringing ton. that is a two versus four. You throw you one down. You've got to lock those in. If you're the side of Optic, that is a fumble. And is this series going to be a fumble from them? I don't know if, you know, maybe looking at things. All these I mean, I'm not going to give them any credit. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, Boston Breach deserve all of it. But there's still work to be done. 4-1 up. Well, it's a bit of a double stack going on, on the stairs here. Methods just behind here as well. TJ firing at the same time. Optic now making a move towards the gate site. They're actually going to try and hold this one down as well. And Methods, though, with that stun, is going to know there are players on the out. Again, a hard push here for Optic. They've chosen to go A again. Can they connect? Vivid has done well here inside of office. He's going to choose to back on down, but through secret we go. Will Optic be ready for it? The answer is absolutely not. Vivid, hi, oh boys, how's it going? There's one. Right back into the spot he was already in. Probably will trade that out, though. Maybe could have found a little bit more there, but the damage is maybe done. Time windling down here for the side of Optic Texas to find a way through, and now here comes TJ. It's constant flanks from the side of Boston, but it's been right by Optic. Complete air control. 
and they get it they get it optic (laughs) eventually managed to make that one work and i was going to say optic looked like they were stumbling over themselves a bit you see players watching the same direction or the same point and and eventually dashi cuts down scum but he does get the kill that could have been disastrous for them in the end but a little bit to staunch the bleeding here for optic boston breach still looking to push this all the way through but it is not clean and it's just it's just not perfect card really from optic texas find a ramp up this by rights should be three three especially that two versus four that moment with nero as well there has been opportunities for optic here some of the rounds have not went their way absolutely that is the case but they have had opportunities to find these rounds tj those neutral picks that come in on the attack for Boston working out once more. Now Prolute needs to go massive. Scump has already found one, but can Prolute somehow hold on here? Oh, he goes to break it himself and, and somehow kills Nero. Vivid will trade it, but it's a two versus two. Methods all the way towards train tracks may catch somebody going P5. That's what he's looking oh, for as well, but Dashy goes him. Snap coming in eventually. This is doable. They're going to fly out towards Scump. Have they seen him go dice? I don't know. I don't know if they have the information. They're looking for him. Oh, my God. Vivid. Just open it. Does Scump see him? Does Scump see him? Scump! I don't know. Oh, there we go. Point of view. We can't... You can see him eventually as well. He's going to go down. 1v1. Dashy versus Vivid. Vivid makes a move. Dashy's going to see him as well. Expects the reach out. He may have waited this too long now as well. Vivid incredible. is going to get the timing at the same time, and that's Absolutely too late. Incredible. He oh, has Vivid played makes that. The play. He so has tough. played that superbly. Oh, Vivid. <laughs> what was that? I wanted to see Scum's point of view because I didn't know whether or not he could see the feet of Vivid sticking out. But why would he expect them there? He thinks he's inside the site. Yeah. Just that tiny bit of COD timing. It wouldn't even compute. Of bad luck. It wouldn't even compute to keep an eye on the right hand side out of your right hand side eye. It wouldn't. You wouldn't even think about it if you think he's still on the site. And Optic now have to win four rounds back to back or the reverse sweep here from Boston Breach. It is all about Nero. Can they eventually go down to Shotzi? They've gone B this time. Optic eventually have stopped trying to hit A. B is down. First blood is down. I'm taking a very commanding position. Flankers potentially on the cards, though. One will fall here for the side of Boston. Make that two. Now TJ left in a one versus three. Now Optic have thrown away a few rounds. I'd like to say they won't throw this one away, though, because they will lock it in. Still the comeback potentially on the cards here, but have they left it too little too late as they did on Bacage? TJ gets taken down, and we need to see a lot more here from Optic. I said, Bryce, look, I, I, there's been a couple of situations in this map where Boston have just clutched up. They found those situations to go in their favor. Optic could be in the position Boston are in right now. They really could be. There have been rounds that have been more than winnable for them, which will give them hope in these last remaining few. But they need to continue to clutch up here. Oh, that's going to be a hit. Here come Boston. Looking to end this right now. They are in the A site. I think half players around it as well. Shots, he's trying to stay alive. There's got people chasing him down as well, though. And Vivid will find him. That's first blood's come for the tower. Eventually, but directly three versus three. Another trade going through, though. Advantage Boston. And Dashi has been found. Prolute's chasing. Prolute is chasing. They really do need to get rid of methods here. The MP40 in hand is not necessarily the best of tools, though, Bryce. 30 seconds remaining. They need to get rid of methods. And they will do so. Two versus two. The push through ticket is never easy, though. Going into P1, and they're going to have to do it fast. They have to find every single kill. They cannot allow the opportunity for Boston to play around this timer. And TJ oh, goes for the flank. The flank is coming through, and probably has not found the player in. Eventually, Dashy will, though. And it's a one versus one, and he has to fly at him, and he loses. <laughs> TJ gets out, Boston Breach win it, three versus two, the reverse sweep against Optic. A team nobody thought they would beat, and Boston, with a roster change, takes down the Titans.
We said they had a hard schedule, but it turns out they have risen to the occasion. And that is some way to start that hard schedule, Pricey. My goodness, what a game. And I've look, there's so many big moments with so many Boston players in that one, but TJ will take the cake with that late flank. The timing you have to have on that, because of how long that methods has to be, well, just stay alive. Optic have to push around. They have to get rid of them. They know that. TJ then pushes around saying, right, okay, well, if they both hit it, let's hit the late flank. Perfect position, perfect timing. Just sensational s and player from the side of Boston who clutched up so many times I'm losing count. How many 1v situations were they in that they clutched up in Optic Texas today did not have the ice. Well, <laughs> there's still another Boston game breached. to go today, by the way. Boston breach. That is the story of this one, though. Vivid, a monster has been released. And look at that. A reverse sweep for Optic. I don't know what else to make of it. Because to be honest with you, that is a crazy series we have seen. Unbelievable turn up for the books. Boston, that is a huge 10 points for them, by the way. Unbelievable. <sighs> Getting that one on the boards. <laughs> Look, <It's been> I, long. <laughs> I, I, I think honestly, looking at that one, the Optic will, will be saying to themselves, how have we lost this series? You're two to zero up. You have Tuscan control. What more could you want? What more yeah. could you want to win a series if you're Optic? You go on to your best map. Your best map, full stop. It doesn't matter what mode, what map. It is your best map and mode combination. 3 0 Reverse sweep on the cards immediately. You start falling apart. What the start of the cards was. I'll tell you what, Tan. A lot, a lot what, of work this to do. Point, a lot of work to do. We have already done enough talking, enough filling, enough analysis. I think it's over to the experts. Let's throw it back to the desk. Yo, wait, wait. No one down. Hey, yo, Bryce, what's up, baby? Tan, why are you so confused, man? You saw the way Vivid was playing. Are you actually shocked at the results? I'm shocked at the result of how it happened. The, the fact that they were two to zero up and then lost Tuscan control no, to, right. to then start right. the right. He's so right. Yeah. It's, it's nice, yeah. Hey, big win by Boston, by the way. But um, hey, let's talk about the match and what happened. And by the way, <sighs> Vivid on this team along with Nero, that's a fast sub duo. Ali, that this team right here, I'm, I'm liking the way the subs are looking. I just remember that opening Berlin round and like we just blinked and Vivid was through P2, like shooting two players in the back boxes. I was just like, what, when did, what, how did, what? And then Nero's like the other side of the map, like behind other players. Like those two together are, might be like the most aggressive sub duo in the league. Yeah, Nameless Man, what, what are your thoughts about this? I, I mean, think... just a wild <laughs> series. Like they win the last three maps, right? Dominant control, but if you think about maps one and two, they could have won both of those as well. They were playing fantastic. Yep. The P4 holds that we saw out of them were just absolutely stellar. Like if, if Method has a better performance here, they win that map outright. And then in that next map in the search and destroy, the attacking rounds towards the latter half got so much better. They were making plays, Vivid running through underground, getting behind them. Like they should have won that game as well. Like potentially they just played better not to gun all five of those maps realistically. True. What an insane performance by Boston Breach. I'll tell you what, I was not believing in this team when they made that change. I did not think Cap was a problem. But Vivid coming in, not only was he was playing aggressive, he was doing his thing, he was playing like a rat. There were multiple rounds, like, <laughs> especially in that control where he was just camping outside of P5, playing his corners, waiting for his teammates. True. It was very impressive to see that turnaround from him. He's got to feel so much more comfortable with these guys around him. I know we have one more series of the day, but I just say we just give the unofficial MVP of the day to Vivid right there for that performance. <laughs> yeah, too, man. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at the points so far to see how things have been folded in. Okay, remember the win. talk at the beginning of the day we were talking about points, right? It's, it's a common theme due to the fact that we're almost at the end of the year. Boston Breach, they are trying their hardest to solidify their chance to go to champs, and Ali, it looks so good right now. 140, sixth place, and they're not looking bad. I mean, we talk about how hard their schedule is in this half, well, they just beat the second team overhaul in CDL points, right? So, well, like I said, that first match really sets the tone, I feel like, when it comes to stage four. We saw it in our first match of, of the day when it was New York versus Florida, now Boston versus Optic. A huge W over arguably, you know, the second best team in the game yeah. to start off the next half of the stage four. That is absolutely insane, but what's going to be even better? We have a game field victory spotlight with my man, Nero, the Ohio native. Get my man's on the screen. What's popping? First off, big win over Optic. But I got I to gotta talk to you about Vivid, man. He's bringing mm -hmm. so much to this team with his impact kills. 
What, like, what was really the final decision that made you guys believe that he was the one for you all? Um, well, I think for us, personally, it was, like, his aggression and uh, the pace, like, his pacing. His pacing matches our team, like, a lot better. So, um, it makes our team better. Nero, I have to ask, how loud was the silence when Vivid was in the 1v2 versus Scump and Dashy with the bomb down by P5? You hear a pin drop. It was crazy. It was, <laughs> that was an insane clutch. Probably one of the best clutches all year. Uh, Nero, congratulations on the win, man. That's got to feel good given the schedule that you guys have going forward. Uh, you know, with this new roster now having Vivid as your sub duo, how does that impact your gameplay on this team from scrims now until this match? You guys look so much better. Oh uh, yeah, so basically now I just go compl I can just go completely rogue and do whatever I want. <laughs> like, that's, ba that's basically all all it is. Like I can just run around freely and just kill. That's my best that's my best trait. Just kill people. A 1.19 KD to close out today, man. Go ahead and show some of the Boston supporters some love and let's get you out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. It's been a long day. Oh, well, yeah, we appreciate you, too. I thought it was going to be longer than that. <laughs> no, Jesus. No, you take it easy. We love you. We'll holler at you later, right? Yeah. We love you guys. No problem. He wanted that interview to just be <laughs> over with. He said, I'm dead. We beat Optic. Let's go pooped. celebrate with the guys. Yeah, That's dude. a big win. Exactly. Now, the scout play of the game is going to be the last round of that search and destroy. Ali, nameless man, just overall, Boston getting a win like that was everything that we needed from this roster. I mean, they had some huge clutches. They had yeah. the 2v4 that they won where Scump doesn't check up top, but really the biggest round to me was that vivid clutch. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was huge. He was literally on site. He caught the perfect timing to get back behind the box, just played the time, ends up killing Scump, and then he plays his life perfectly. He knows Dashy isn't going to defuse, and then he gets the kill at the end. It was perfect. And then also, I mean, this round was big as well, man. This is how they close it out, Ellie. It's, it's been TJ for me, right? So, like, you see him hitting the route right now into P5 to get that perfect flank because Nero does get taken down, but with the way timing was going, TJ had the perfect route to get him off that bomb in time. But TJ, this entire series for me, I feel like has stepped it up ever since stage three has stepped it up. But to see him go up against a team like Optic Texas, his old team, by the way, and fry like this, he has to be on top of the world. He had no fear. I mean, there were that, multiple yeah. rounds on that map where he was just challing mid. And like, when you shut down Optic on their mid pushes like that, yeah. and Shotzi's not getting up behind enemy lines, it frees it up for you. Like we saw Vivid in multiple rounds, like go through secret, get behind them. That play that he made where he flanks around, gets yeah. the kills on the stairs. Like that's huge. It gives you liberty to take map control from Optic. They really, they played it perfectly strategically. All right, hopefully next time around, we see those Optic boys pull out a big dub. And also um, the same with Boston Breach. This team, they, they fried today. Hopefully they keep it up here heading into the fourth major. But ladies and gentlemen, we have one more series on the day. We have the Toronto Ultra facing off against the new look Los Angeles Gorillas. But once again, hey, yo, shout out to Boston Breach. Ali was right with the predictions. No bias caster at all with that big reverse sweep. And um, hey, hopefully Boston continues on. We'll see you guys on the other side of the break.